Hello class, uh, this will be the last, finally, of the recorded lectures for section 5.5. And here we're going to walk through a example from start to finish now, uh, implementing um, the concepts and ideas from uh, chapter five, the first five sections. And so this is the problem and we'll walk through uh, each one of these steps. And so here's our equation. And basically what we're going to do is to walk through everything we did in chapter 5.1 and, or section 5.1, excuse me, and then uh, section 5.5 five, and walk through all the ideas of calculations uh, of a polynomial equation and try to sketch it the best way we can uh, with regards to the zeros and leading term test and all that other good stuff. So let's start with the equation f of x is x cubed plus 8x squared plus 11x minus 20. So Let's do what we did in uh, section 5.1. First one was the y-intercept. Well, that is minus 20, right? So the y-intercept is 0 minus 20. So hopefully that's the easiest one. So the degree is 3. The uh, maximum number of turning points That is three minus one, right? N minus one, which is two. And then uh, do you remember the N behavior or leading term test? So let's do that. So uh, what we were doing is what is the leading term? It's X cubed. And so what happens is X goes to positive infinity. You plug in infinity here and cubed, and you see it also goes to positive infinity. So as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity. And then the other one is x goes to minus infinity. You plug that into the leading term. You see we have three negatives, so that also goes to minus infinity. So as x goes to minus infinity, y goes to minus infinity. Whoops. And I'm keeping all this here. I wish I had a little bigger whiteboard for this example, but I think we'll be okay. So that was uh, kind of the introduction from section 5.1. And so let's talk about the new stuff here in section 5.5. So the question is, find the x-intercepts. And you're like, well, okay. So, but as I uh, alluded to before, what we really want to do is um, leverage the rational zero theorem. And so the beauty of this is that minus 20, and then we have, uh, plus one for the leading term. So what are these factors? Where well, you're gonna get plus or minus one and plus or minus 20. And you're gonna get plus or minus five and plus or minus four. And I think you can get plus or minus two and plus or minus 10. And the beauty of that is you divide it by plus or minus one. And so that, uh, when you divide all that in there, you still get uh, everything that we had in the numerator. And so how many different possibilities do we have? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 different possibilities. So instead of trying every single number you can think of, you want to start with these 12. But before we do that, let's do Descartes' theorem. And so remember Descartes' theorem will tell you how many positive real zeros, negative real zeros, and complex real zero possibilities there are. So here we have in Descartes' theorem, what 
we would have here is no sign change, no sign change, one sign change. So for a positive, one's a great number, right? Because one minus two is minus one. So there's only uh, one possibility. And what's great about one possibility is that if there's only one possibility, it has to be true. So this particular equation has one positive real zero. So I would start by plugging some of those numbers in that are positive first to see what we got. So that's really nice. So now we do the negative real zeros. So we have to do this transformation. And we just plug in minus x wherever we see x. Minus 20. So this would be minus x cubed. This would be plus, right? We have two minuses. We have one minus. And we have one minus. So when we do this, sign change, sign change. No sign change. So we have two sign changes. So there's two or two minus two, which is zero. So there is a negative real. There's either a possibility of two or zero uh, negative real zeros. Now remember, our degree is three. So the total number of zeros we have uh, are three, which are either real or complex. And so when you generate this table. We would have positive. You know what, let me see if I could uh, move this over so we can keep this table up when we do these calculations. Let's do it over here. So we'd have positive, negative, and complex. And so the beauty of this is we have two negative possibilities and only one positive. So two times one is two. So we're only going to have two columns, which is nice, right? And each one of these columns should add up to three. And so this would be one and one, and that would be two and zero. And you could see we either have zero complex or two. And remember that always has to be uh, a multiple of two, an even number uh, with regard to that. Okay, so now we look at this and we say to ourselves, we got to find the x intercepts. So when we do that calculation, what we're going to do is start plugging in some of these values here to see what we get. And when we do that, we might as well try to find the positive one because we know one of them has to be positive real. And it is a math class, so we set it up kind of nice that one of these is going to work. So the easiest one to try is f of 1. And so that would be 1 cubed plus x times 1 squared plus 11 times 1 minus 20. So that would be 1 plus 8 plus 11 minus 20. And isn't that nice? I want equals zero. So remember, what it, if the zero is plus one, the factor is going to be x minus one. So now what do we do? Well, you have to use some sort of division to uh, simplify the equation by uh, getting it into a factored form. And so uh, what I'm going to do is, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. What I'm gonna do is the synthetic division, plus or minus two and plus or minus 10. So when you do synthetic division, this would be a one. And then this is x cubed, x squared, x and a constant. So those values would be, one and eight and 11 and minus 20. So we 
found the one. One times one is one. Eight and one is nine. One times nine is nine. Eleven and nine is twenty. One and times twenty is twenty. And if this isn't zero, we did something wrong. So what is the other factor form of the equation? Since we started with x cubed, this starts as x squared. So this is x squared plus 9x plus 20. And so this is what our factored form looks like. So here's our positive. Now, looking at the Cartes theorem, we either have two possibilities. The next two will be negative or complex. That's it. There's no other choice. If no more positives will work, so you don't even have to think about that. But here's the beauty. We have a quadratic now. And you remember all the work we did in trying to find the intercepts of quadratics. Well, you could use a quadratic formula and you'll get the other two x-intercepts. Or this one, you could see, hopefully is factorable. Uh, where four times five is 20 and four plus five is nine. So you see, we have this plus five, x plus four, and that would give you our three zeros. And what are the last zeros? Well, the last two zeros have to be negative and they are, they're minus five and minus four. Very cool, at least I think it's very cool. Okay, so I need to make myself a little bit of room here. So I'm gonna erase the synthetic division. So the last thing we wanna do is sketch this thing. And so let me rewrite the equation. It would be x plus five, x plus four, and x minus one. And so, we have three zeros, and remember that idea of multiplicity? Well, the multiplicity of all those are odd, right? They're all equal to one. So you'll see when we sketch this thing, it's gonna cross the x-axis three times. So let's see what we have here now. And so minus 20 would be, say, all the way down here. So this would be our y-intercept zero minus 20. And then what is our x-intercepts? Well, let's put those in there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So let me do this in blue. So I'll put that in blue. So the x-intercept is plus one. The uh, x-intercept here is minus four, and the x-intercept here is minus five. And so we have the four points that we did here. We have uh, the uh, end behavior, right? And so the idea of end behavior is x goes to minus infinity, y goes to minus infinity, so the line goes down there. And as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity. So the line goes up here. So now you connect the dots. I always start most negative, and it's nice and smooth. So it'll come up to the first x-axis, or first zero. And it multiplicity is odd, so it goes through. And it has to turn to come back to the next one. There's our one turning point. We have to get down to the y-intercept. And then we got to turn back our second turning point up to the last zero at x equals one. And then we head out to the end behavior uh, as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity. Now, as I said before, these turning points, you will learn how to find the exact values in calculus. So for this class, I'm not gonna ask you to get those exact values. So to finish this, uh, let me show you what the graph would look like if you use some technology to help you with it. So what I did is uh, plopped it on the Desmos here. Let me show you what that looks like. So I 
pause the recording and typed in the equation up here and you could see here's what the graph shows us. And so here's our two turning points. You can see the X intercepts are at minus five, minus four and plus one. You can see that the turning point is a little bit below the Y intercept, right? Like I said, you won't know how to calculate this. You get the calculus, but you can see we do go through the Y intercept. And again, as X goes to minus infinity, shoots down to y goes to minus infinity and the same and the other side right as x goes to positive infinity y goes to positive infinity so that ends finally section five five uh, hopefully this example uh, brings and ties everything together uh, and uh, you'll get an opportunity to uh, play with this in the homework and our quiz and our next exam will have a problem like this as well